think it's awesome, but oh, it yeah. could be Let's a little. See it. We gotta see it. Tell me if you think it's a little too quirky. I know you want it sophisticated, so. There's something so satisfying about watching people do home renovations from the comfort of your couch. He's Actually, only seven but... weeks late, but you're welcome. <laughs> Anytime. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 current home and design shows. We want to bring in that southern charm, mm -hmm. some rustic elements as well, mm -hmm. okay? For this list, we're only looking at shows that are still on TV as of 2016. So old favorites like TLC's Trading Spaces, Homes on Homes, and Extreme Makeover Home Edition won't be considered, no matter how amazing they may be. Number 10, Rehab Addict. You gotta think of it in four sections. All of your water flowing out of here goes right into that drain. If this is all level, your water's not draining. Unlike a lot of popular home shows, which make it seem like drastic renovations can be magically completed over a weekend, Rehab Addict spreads the restoration of one house over several episodes in a season, so viewers get a more realistic impression of what it's like to bring a home from decrepit to jaw-dropping. I'll never understand it when people cover up hardwood floors to put down like fake floors. Fake linoleum, crappy carpeting. Host Nicole Curtis picks older homes with a lot of historic character that have seen better days and attempts to bring them back to their former glory. I just can't wait to move in. It's like the most beautiful house on the block. Because you get to see the whole in-depth process with all its ups and downs, it's really easy to get super invested in each home and feel a swell of pride when the project is finally complete. We've taken this rundown, forgotten about, added on, not so luxurious space, and with simple $100 fixes everywhere I look, we've transformed it. Number 9. This old house. And Angela is not afraid of color, is she, huh? No, it's gonna be nice. This old house is pretty much the home reno show that started it all. The show has been on air since 1979. That's 10 years longer than The Simpsons. If you've seen every episode of This Old House, at this point you probably have the skills required to be a licensed contractor. There's something very soothing and low stress about the format of the show. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to add an entire new cabinet and countertop to give them more workspace and more storage space. You're going to appreciate that. Absolutely. Everything always seems to be under control and the experts have a solution to any problem thrown at them. That was fast. It was. You expect the handrail to go as quickly? I do. We got a lot of this stuff from the factory. We've already set the top and we've gotten that taken care of. And if you want a chance to get the show to help with one of your home reno dilemmas, you can write to Ask This Old House a spin-off of the original series. Richard, we're getting a lot of letters from people about their hot water faucets. They're either tired of waiting for the hot water to show up, or they're tired of wasting the cold right. water watching it go down the drain. Number eight, Yard Crashers. We used to have two sheds, and now we have this tranquil space filled with flowing water. Keep your eyes peeled next time you're in the garden section of Home Depot because if you're lucky, you could be chosen to get a free backyard makeover on Yard Crashers. There's a like, bunch of people with a TV and a boom mic here, like just watching me talk on the phone. The Yard Crashers crew chooses one lucky homeowner and spends two days completely revamping their outdoor space. Two days worth of work, call your friends, I'll see you guys in the morning. Thank, All right, you. thank, thank you. you. They may have only been at the hardware store for a quick DIY project, but these families will end the weekend with a totally new and improved yard. Oh, and if one of the hosts, Chris Lampton, looks familiar, that's because he made it to the final two on Allie's season on The Bachelorette. There's just something very manly about Chris that I find very attractive. Number seven, Property Virgins. I'm really glad that Dan and Holly haven't pinpointed one specific neighborhood, and they've given me great information about what they are looking for. The most satisfying part of watching Property Virgins is that you feel like a real estate expert after just a few episodes. I was honestly expecting to walk into a room or like a foyer, but it's just yeah. stairs. That is the difference between yeah. a standard rancher and a split-level rancher. Okay. You see the young couple with their big hopes and dreams for their new home, and you know that there's no way they can afford it. This would be perfect for my first grandchild. <laughs> <laughs> or an office. Three bedrooms in that neighborhood? Yeah, right. You're not willing to do any renovations? Good luck. Property Virgins is legitimately a great learning tool, though, because you get a really good sense of what you can expect out of the modern housing market. The show takes place in a variety of different cities, providing a solid overview of what it's like to buy a home in today's real estate climate. It's a walk-in closet! Oh my god! Just like you wanted. Wow! This is great. Number 6. 
curb appeal. We love that he really stayed true to the character of the house, character of the neighborhood, um, and that, I mean, he kind of embraced it and took it to the next level. A first impression is a lasting impression. Most home design shows focus on improving a home's interior, but curb appeal works under the principle that it's what's on the outside that counts. I want to break it down even further by painting those two floors different and then giving you a water table made out of stacked clad stone. You'll be inspired to give your home a pretty face after watching what this crew can do with some new siding, paint, and a few artfully placed bushes. The Japanese maple goes in next to the stairs, a delicate contrast coming off the brick. The team tackles all manner of issues, from lack of greenery to crumbling facades to just plain lack of character. Think of them as the green option, the lilac option, the coral option. When the Curb Appeal crew is done working their magic, each home will definitely turn heads. The house begins here now. It yeah. doesn't begin inside. It's you here. Think use this? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Number five, income property. Ooh. Welcome to our 1960s cottage. <laughs> <laughs> this Canadian show helps homeowners make a few extra bucks by creating a rental unit in their home. Lynn and Heather's kitchen, it was in pretty good shape, but it wasn't getting them top dollar. Host Scott McGilvery is both a real estate investor and a contractor, so he knows his stuff when it comes to making the right decisions about reno and design. You may have to replace just all the floors to keep it consistent. 3,000 bucks worth of flooring in here. Everyone would love to find a way to offset their mortgage payments and improve the value of their homes, and Income Property delivers great advice for doing so. After watching this show, you'll be convinced that renovating and renting out your basement is the key to financial bliss. Is option two in the budget? Not entirely. And you know what? You can finish that bunkie later once yeah. you've collected some rent. Season 11 of the show, Income Property on Vacation, focuses on creating and renting vacation properties. Look at the view! This is incredible! You couldn't see anything before in the kitchen. Number 4. Love it or list it. Hello? Okay, so we're not going to expand the nanny's room into the sports and recreation facility. It's got to stay as is. Okay. Another Canadian export, Love It or List It, helps couples or families who are unhappy with their homes decide whether to renovate and stay where they are or move on to better things. Adding on to the house may not be as easy as Andrew thinks, but perhaps the changes aren't as insurmountable as Sarah believes. The couples can never agree on what the best course of action is, and it's pretty much guaranteed that disaster will strike at some point during the renovation. I have no idea where to go on this one. I I'm going to let them just duke it out. We're investing in our children. Enough with that, okay? We just spent so much money down there. we got to keep it as is. Okay, fine. Much of the fun of this show is the combative banter between designer Hillary and real estate agent David. It's lovely. Come on. It's a great size. It's bright. It's light. Obviously, it needs to be updated. You're incredible. <laughs> you just really are. Fans love to try to guess whether the couple will decide to love it or list it and are often bitterly disappointed when they clearly make the wrong choice. We are going to love it. <laughs> what? Uh, You're going to give up on that master much. bedroom? Number three, Fixer Upper. I want it to feel old, but I would like it to end up looking new, yeah. <laughs> if that's possible. Home improvement power couple Chip and Joanna Gaines stole the hearts of HGTV lovers everywhere when their show debuted in 2013. We take the worst house in the best neighborhood and we turn it into our client's dream home. This husband and wife team helps families buy and renovate inexpensive homes that need a lot of love. She comes in at the end and picks paint colors and some hardware and everybody's always like, Oh my God! Oh my OMG! And they have four kids at home. Talk about making the rest of us feel like underachievers. Chip's impressive reno work and Joanna's shabby chic style will have you considering a move to Waco, Texas, where the show is filmed. It's a little more subtle. It's yeah, not so bold. It's not so, this is more me. This is definitely more me. Mm -hmm. Chip and Joanna want nothing more than to please their clients, and it shows. Every episode ends with some very happy families seeing their new homes for the very first time. I'm telling you now, this house is like a brand new house with a lot of character. Mm -hmm. So hopefully you feel that when you walk in. Number two. Property Brothers. The mudroom is super cool. Our splash room turned out great. If you've seen at least one episode of Property Brothers, you know the drill. These are my good pants, so you pour and then I'll get in there. All right. How do you wear good pants at construction mm -hmm. site? They look good. First, 
Identical twins Jonathan and Drew Scott takes a nice young couple to an absolutely gorgeous home with every feature they've ever wanted. Yeah, we can do French doors here. Instead of just a little door, do some nice big French doors. Then they break the news that this house is way out of their budget. We're not showing this house because we think you need to buy it. You can't afford it. We're showing you this house because this is what you're asking for. Move in ready. You're saying this is your must have. After the couple gets over that disappointment, the brothers show them a few houses that are serious fixer uppers and using some sweet technology, show them how they plan to work their magic to turn the place into their dream home. And boy, do these guys deliver. <laughs> What do you think of the new sign? Oh, I love the sign. We took a piece of wood from one of the old buildings we took down and then just had this cut out. Don't miss Brother vs. Brother, which shows Drew and Jonathan competing against each other in a series of home reno challenges. During, since the 90s, since we started buying and selling houses, the two of us were hands-on. That's right, you were helping Jonathan. Oh! Put your hands up. Who's, who's, who's hands more rugged? Which hands yeah, look like who's they've who's been doing more constructive? Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. In a tiny house, everything has to have multiple purposes. Oh, what are you doing? Checking out our new toilet. <laughs> We'd like that wine audited. Ooh. Nasty. It's called respect, and oh, I have uh. none for anyone. Maybe we can move on. And downright dirty. Come on! This is days of our lives stuff right here on the block. This is very beautiful. The play of light on this wall is gorgeous, isn't it? With the sun twinkling on it. Number one, House Hunters. The balcony, I mean, it does overlook the highway, but... It's horrible. Yeah. You really want to look at that every day? The charm of House Hunters lies in the fact that the formula for each episode is consistent, and the couples or homeowners to be on the show are so delightfully predictable. I actually really like it. Does it work? <laughs> I believe they work. Everyone thinks they need tons of room to entertain. Someone's going to make a joke about the walk-in closet. Most likely, the wife will ask her husband where he's going to put his clothes and paint colors are seemingly unchangeable. Even I could fit in here. Yeah, well, you're not allowed. Fans pride themselves on being able to accurately predict which home will be chosen in each episode. It is the fixer. And when you feel like you've seen every episode of the original series, set your DVR to record House Hunters International, House Hunters Renovation, or Island Hunters for hours of house hunting. Well, it's hard to see the island from here. It's the dock and then the cottage right away, so. Yeah, the island's actually quite long. Long and narrow. Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite home renovation show? Hey, that babysitter needs to leave. Baby, you need to hug your babysitter. I will hug my babies. For more well-designed top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to Ms. Mojo. Okay, now just pull on the lid that would pull the siding out. We should be able to rock that right in there. Oh yeah, it's going nice. Oh, look at that. There. There we go. There it is. It's in there. Very nice.